Welcome back to Confidently. This is building block number four, monetizing your services. And today we're going to go deeper into your pitch scripts, how to prepare and pace your sales conversations. Now, reminder of where we are on the Confidently success map, achieving progress, not perfection to market and scale your expert-based business. And we're right here in pitch scripts. Now, it's really important. The first part of your preparation for a sales call is your pre-call ritual. And at least 15 minutes before the call, maybe more than that, give yourself the space to really be ready to show up confidently on your sales call. So make sure that you're in a quiet room with no interruptions, lock the door, even if it's in a closet in your house where you need a lot of quiet, do that and add anything that helps you be motivated and focused, like maybe your values or your pro pledge um, printed out, a candle maybe, um, a picture of your avatar, your ideal client, maybe even the person you're talking to, um, have a picture of them up and do your research on them before you have the call to know where you know, they are. Prepare the space, so making sure that your headphones are hands-free for taking notes and expressing yourself, or if you're doing a Zoom or some type of online meeting, make sure your Wi-Fi is stable and your auto recording is turned on. That's really important because if you wanna listen back, which I really encourage you to do to, um, as you're doing as many sales calls as possible, you wanna to listen to what worked and what didn't work. And also they might ask you for the recording which is a nice, generous give to give them. Print out the intake questions and have them in front of you. If you're not the type of person who likes paper, that's fine. But I would have the intake, quest intake questions somewhere where it's easy for you to see, even if it's in another tab, open on your desktop or maybe on you know, an iPad or your phone next to you so that you can reference. It's really important that you reference the intake form. Have a pen and notepad ready for notes and release all attachment to the yes. And instead put all the commitment onto accurate diagnosis. Because remember, sales calls are really about you diagnosing and prescribing the right solution for them. You're the expert sitting in the seat that you are. Just like a doctor would be diagnosing some type of problem you have physically or mentally, the same idea, okay? You are the one in the driver's seat here and you want to really focus on that it's an accurate diagnosis because not all good money not all money is good money. And also sometimes you're not the right solution for the person on the phone and you only find that out by getting on the phone with them, okay? Lose all the emotional baggage from the day or previous calls, be tranquil and focused and have your phone or computer prepped and ready for you to connect the moment the clock turns the time. So remember, as I said, it's time for you to serve and enroll and you are in charge of this conversation. You are diagnosing and prescribing what your prospect needs. You're the expert and know best in the situation. So you want to trust that. And you've done everything to showcase the value of your offer leading up to this point because you marketed to them to get them on the sales call. So be careful not to sell past the close. And there's no such thing as no. There's only not yet or next. Okay. <laughs> so Let's go through the cadence and the sequence of the actual sales call. And all of these questions are in the workbook that's been provided to you, okay? So part one is a warm opening. So of course, you're just gonna greet them with your, you know, with, with non-awkward niceties, okay? So asking them how the day of the week is treating you. So if you're talking to them on a Monday, how's your Monday going? And then you just wanna move them directly into the conversation. And I notice a lot of people, because they're nervous, they start really what we call talking story at the top of this call. And you want to, again, be polite and be caring, but you don't want to spend too much time at the top because otherwise you don't leave enough time for the conversation. Trust me, they'll have even more stories to talk about while they're talking to you. Part two is stating the agenda and taking the lead. So you're going to say something like this. And by the way, this is a script to give you structure. You want to talk and speak like a normal person and in the words that you would normally use, okay? But understand the crux of each one of the parts that I'm going to outline for you so that you know how to address it in your language. So you're going to say, we're on this call today to talk about your topic, and I'm going to ask you questions about what you said and the application that you submitted. And if it sounds like our company can help, 
um, and we're a good fit, then we'll go exactly how we can help you. And at the end, you can make a decision whether or not you want that support and you want them to actually confirm. Do you, you know, like, yeah, I understand that. Or no, I don't understand that. Okay. Because sometimes for some reason they'll get on the call and they're like, oh, we're going to, you're going to sell me something. And, you know, you can say, yeah, we're actually on the phone to, de you know, determine whether or not my program is a good fit for you. But ultimately I definitely want to support you. And even if it's not a good fit, I'd be happy to refer you to something else or someone else, et cetera. So make sure you wait for the confirmation. Part three is figure out what and why. So for example, if you're talking to me, Jen, um, tell me what motivated you to take the time out of your day and schedule a call with me. And they're going to tell you something. Make sure that you are not afraid to not cut them off rudely, but be able to segue them into part four in a moment um, because people like to get caught up in their story. But what you can do is you can dig under with some probing questions like, what did you mean by that specifically when you told me about that part of your story? Or tell me more about that. Or why do you think this problem exists at all? Or what else have you tried to do to fix this? How long have you been dealing with it? And why schedule this call? Because there are dozens of relationship coaches, for example, that you could have gone to both locally and across the nation. Why did you make time to schedule it? Now, remember, your intake form is there for you as, frankly, <laughs> a little sales crutch because it allows you to see what they've already said and use that as information to show that you understand you did your homework on them. Okay. Part four is understand the current situation. So you can next go into, okay, so what specifically is the problem you want to solve and how is that problem affecting your daily life? And then you move into part five, which is gathering data and creating some tension and asking them, what are some of the things this particular problem is stopping you from doing? And what opportunities have you missed on because of this problem? And let's say in an ideal world, you didn't have this problem. What would you be doing? Part six is gathering data and creating possibilities. So if you're talking to them, okay, Jen, so let's say that you're able to fix that relationship problem over the next six months. What would your life look like then? What are some specific things that would be better in your daily life if, you know, those relationship issues weren't an issue? It seems like you've given a lot of thought to what your life looks like with, you know, that relationship problem no longer bothering you. And how are you currently making this a reality to change, you know, what's happening in your life? Part seven is releasing control and self-admission. So here's where you say, okay, Jen, to summarize your current situation, you're suffering from relationship issues and want to achieve a better relationship with your spouse in the next six months. And you want them to wait. You, have, you want them to answer you yes or no. And then you say, you're crystal clear on what you want. So what's achieving, what's stopping you from achieving that on your own without any help or support? And then you want to stop talking and wait for their confirmation. Part eight is gaining commitment and wrapping in emotions. So then you move into, okay, Jen, why not stay here? Are you ready to stop tolerating those relationship issues? And you want to wait for confirmation. And is this something you're trying to change now? And you want to wait for confirmation. Now, I know it might seem awkward, this idea of stopping talking, et cetera, but there is a lot of power in the listening part of the sales call. But again, you have to find some discipline around the difference between listening and moving them outside of their story because they can go on and on and on. But the main thing is you're wanting them to just keep affirming for themselves that they want to make the change in their life. That's the point of the silence. Okay. Part nine is acknowledging the gap and permission to share. So you can say, okay, Jen, we can definitely help with that. I'd like to share how we can help you now. Sound good. So this is where you're bridging to the actual prescribing your solution to them. So part 10 is state what you're an expert at. So you want to tell them, you know, Hi, I'm Jennifer Kim. I help entrepreneurs like you get seen, heard, and paid confidently. And I feel you're a great candidate for us to work together. And here's why. I have spent, you know, X amount of years doing this for people like you. And I have a client actually right now who has a very similar situation to yours. And we were able to help her through X, Y, and Z. So this is my particular example. You want to make sure you write out this part before you actually have the call. Okay. Okay. Focus more on the way that you can help 
them through the problem based on your experience and expertise using your tests. This is probably the most important thing. And if you're like, gosh, I'm new to this, and so I don't have a lot of experience in this, what should I do then? You have experience in something. We've worked all those out inside of the messaging and marketing building blocks. And so if you are still stuck here, go back to that and use that. And as you get clients, more and more and more, you'll start to be able to substitute what were just stories into real case studies, okay? Part 11 is state your offer and how it works. So when done correctly, up until this point, your prospect will ask you how they can work with you or what you have to offer when they ask you to present what you have in a clear way that does not solve their issues. So here's where you state what you do and how it works. Now make sure you talk about it at a high level and keep it somewhat vague. When I say that, you can give them the structure, et cetera, of your program or your services. That's fine. But don't talk about the processes or the micro things because that stuff will trigger the wrong feature brain in your prospect and you want to keep their brain fixed on the outcome, not the stuff they get. Okay. Now you want to make sure you write all this out in advance because everybody's different. Um, but practice it in the mirror before you have the call. And that's why that preparation time is so important. And your description of how your thing works should no, be no more than two minutes and should not talk about price. So present the offer and then stop talking and wait for confirmation of their acknowledgement of your offer. And now your prospect will start asking you questions about how it works and they'll keep asking questions until they have a clear understanding of exactly how it works and more importantly will work for them. When you present your offer in vague detail, the prospect then asks you for all the pieces they need to understand and they keep asking until they have the full picture that they need. Now, as you ask, answer the questions, be careful not to divert the conversation. Just answer the specific question they asked and then stop talking. Eventually, when your prospect is asked all the questions they have regarding the offer, they will ask you for the price question. Now, before I jump into that, I just want to reiterate, the reason that you keep it vague is because what they're really doing, and that's what makes our program, this Confidently program, so, 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 so potent, is that you're actually putting it on them to decide because they're the ones, you're giving them the opportunity to really think about why they want this and how it solves their problems. And the more they talk it out, the more they convince themselves that you don't have to, okay? So now you're moving into pricing. It's very important as you get to this stage, guys, like really be mindful of your energy because I know pricing makes people nervous, okay? But this is the script and then I would just practice it ahead of time. So you can say something like this. Well, the everyday price for this is X, but I found that those who make decisions quickly always turn out to be the best clients and we do amazing work together. So for that reason, I have something called incentive-based pricing, where if you make a decision on the call with me today, I knock X amount off the investment and it's just X, Y amount. Now, you don't have to do a discount. You could do an incentive, like when you sign up with me today, I'm going to throw in a one-on-one -on -one call with you, which is not part of the normal package, or I'm going to give you a year's access to my monthly group coaching, something like that. Um, it does not have to be discount because I'm not a big fan of discounts per se, but I am a fan of like positioning price in different ways. Okay. The silence that you, that you let them sit in um, is really important because, because again, it allows them to think through what you're saying. And sometimes the silence can be kind of uncomfortable. It can be like 30 minutes, I'm sorry, 30 seconds to, to a minute, maybe more. Um, but allow them to be in the moment, okay? And what you're hoping for is they're going to say something like, what's the next step? Okay, well, what's next? How do I get started? Or let's do it. And if they say, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm nervous about the money, you know, all that, we're going to get to that in the next training, okay? But for now, this is your ultimate goal is to get them to let's take the next step. And the main thing is be ready to take their money. Make sure that you have your checkout open that you can take their card over the phone or on the zoom call and you can process them immediately do not wait until they get off the phone or if they say oh, i'll have to go get my credit card it's downstairs say you can wait you can wait for that it's not a big deal because you know sometimes people what they'll do is they'll say oh i 
you know, I'll, I'll just email me the information and I'll process from there and say, no, actually we have to, in order for you to qualify for the incentive, we have to, you know, be on the call and handle it right now kind of thing. Okay. So with that said, I want you to take these guidelines and this structure we provided to you and write your own scripts um, using the workbook provided. And if you want any feedback on that, you can go to monthly coaching or be in the strategy clinic of the pro level and check this lesson off on your confidently success map and make sure to do the next lesson within 48 hours of completing this one. I'll see you in the next training.